Hello my friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new to my channel. I hope you enjoy your stay. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of February, which, hello, I'm actually really proud of this. I read a total of 15 books. Hi, look at them. Hi, let's look at them together. These are heavy, hold up, okay. I definitely wouldn't have been able to read this many books if it weren't for the sponsor of today's video, GlassesUSA.com, hi, hello. By cutting out the middleman, GlassesUSA.com offers over 9,000 pairs of glasses and sunglasses that include in-house brands as well as designer brands like Gucci, Prada, Michael Kors, and so many more, with up to 70% off on retail prices. They also offer a risk-free shopping experience with free shipping and returns and 100% money-back guarantee within 14 days of your purchase. I've always had such a hard time shopping online for glasses because I'm always scared that they're not gonna look right or they're just not gonna fit, but GlassesUSA.com makes this process stress-free and so easy, it's unbelievable. They even have this quiz that helps you find the right pair of glasses for your face shape and your eye needs. I think my favorite part of glasses GlassesUSA.com is the virtual try-on tool that they have on their website where you just upload a picture of yourself and then you can preview what the frames would look like on your face. I feel like this makes the shopping experience so much faster, so much easier, and I feel much more confident when I'm buying them because I already know what they look like. As someone who stares at screens for most of the day, I love that GlassesUSA.com offers advanced blue light blocking lenses. They're perfect for protecting my eyes while I'm I'm editing, answering emails, and basically just girl bossing too close to the sun. They were kind enough to send me two pairs of glasses that I am now going to talk about. These are the first pair that I got, and honestly, I love it. I love the hexagonal shape. These also have the blue light blocking lenses, and I just love that I can look this delicious, this amazing, while also protecting my eyes. I just love how they frame my face and they look exactly how they looked when I tried them on on the virtual try-on tool and I just couldn't be happier about them. I feel like I, I can live my best life and it's all thanks to these glasses. <laughs> the next pair that I got are actually sunglasses. Hi, look at them. Hi, stunning. These are your classic, oh my god, I... I've always wanted to get one of these and these are just perfect. I feel so delicious. I feel like I'm about to go on a film set and just like live out my best life. I just feel, yeah. So these are the second pair that I got hi hello so everyone give a very big thank you to glassesusa.com for doing the most with these glasses and helping me look like a gorgeous gorgeous girl make sure to check out the link in my description to get 65 percent off your first pair of glasses from glassesusa.com now that i've shown off my stunning pairs of glasses we can talk about the 15 books that i read in february this honestly was not planned. I started the month very slowly. I feel like it was February 10th and I still hadn't finished a single book and I was like, maybe February is just not meant to be a reading month. But then something got into me. I was like, you know what? Let's read. Let's read 15 books because why not? So the first book that I read, I started very strong with a horror manga by one of my favorite horror manga authors and that is Junji Ito. This is his collection of short stories wrapped up into Smashed. I can't lie, I'm a very big fan of horror manga and Junji Ito never disappoints. I feel like I would love, no, I would hate to spend a whole minute inside of his mind because I just feel like you have to be on something to be able to come up with these stories and I feel like if I spent even a second inside of his mind, I would go insane. I would clinically go insane. But if you're a fan of horror manga or if you've never tried horror manga and you want to get into them, I would highly suggest Junji Ito because he is the master of this genre and he's amazing. In February, I guess I was just feeling sad and I needed to read back on some of my favorite books just to like get me back on the reading wagon and that is exactly what I did. I reread the Foxhole Court trilogy. So we have the Foxhole Court, the Raven King, and the King's Men. Now listen, these books, 
I think the last time that I read them was in 2017. So I didn't, I honestly, like in general, I know that I love these books, but you don't know how much they mean to you until you reread them because I was a whole other person when I was reading these books. I remember staying up until like 3 a.m finishing The King's Men because even though I know how these books end and even though even though I know what's going to happen there's just something about the writing and living with these characters all over again that just makes staying up until 3 a.m worth it and if you don't know <laughs> how do I even explain this? I feel like even explaining the synopsis you won't understand why it's so good because basically we're following this character called Neil Jostin and he is a runaway. He's running away from his past, but then his past catches up to him in the form of an old friend. And this friend invites him to join his Exe team. So Exe is this fictional sport that the author Nora Sakovic makes up. She makes up this whole sport and it's basically the basis of these three books. So basically we're following this team but we're also following like the individual characters because they have their own lives and they're kind of messed up. They're kind of like a team of misfits and they all have their own issues and like as you start to get to know them and they start to get to know each other, the banter, the relationship, the character development, the rise, the tension, the climax, everything about this trilogy was so fantastically done and I love that I decided to reread them because there's just something so magical about these books um, and I love them. I really do love them. I love Neil, I love Andrew, I love Kevin, I love the foxes and yeah. I just, I just had re such a wonderful time rereading these. I think the Raven King does have like the collection of most of my favorite moments. I can't really speak about them because spoilers, but oh my God, when I first read them, nobody was reading them. So I never got to talk about these books, but now that I've reread them and I have seen some people rereading them or reading them for the first time on booktube, it's just this whole new experience. So if you pick up these books or if you've read these books, please let me know. Please let's discuss because I need to talk about the foxes with someone. <laughs> this was a four star and these two were five stars. I'm sorry, like I cannot lie. Like this is a really good first book, but I did feel at times like the pace was a little bit off. So that's why I took off a whole star. But then these two, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> The next four books, I wasn't even planning on reading them, honestly. They were just there, and for some reason, I woke up this one day and I was like, why not? L why not read it? Um, <laughs> the next four books are Book of the Month books from the month of February. The first Book of the Month book that I read on February. Why was that so confusing? The first Book of the Month book that I read on February was Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. I have never owned a book with a bare chest and I don't think I will anymore because this was a two star. This was so disappointing because this was advertised as this like really scandalous and salacious read but honestly it was so boring and for someone who's supposed to be obsessed with the, the title character Vladimir, she barely talks about him and the times that she does talk about him, she just uses him as a segue to talk about herself. So honestly, she's like a very self-centered woman. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're selling me a story about a woman who's obsessed with Vladimir, make it believable, you know what I mean? Like the only thing that I got was that she was obsessed with herself, which is not bad, but honestly, she's a very boring main character. So there was like no substance. Provocative, not really. Darkly funny, I didn't even chuckle. I hated it here. I honestly did not have a good time. I think the only reason I finished it is because it's so short and I was like, why not? I don't want to have any DNFs this month. So I just pushed through and I wish someone would have pushed me into oncoming traffic. I don't even know if I, did I even mention what this book was about? Okay, we have this woman, she's an English professor and suddenly her husband, who is also an English professor, is being attacked by these students who are saying that he took advantage of them. He had sexual intercourse with them. So the husband is dealing with these allegations of having sex with his students. So there's this whole drama going on. And then this new teacher comes in called Vladimir and our main character is like, obsessed with him but not really 
and there's like this whole mystery going on about what's gonna happen with the with the husband and what's gonna happen with Vladimir and the growing tension between him and the main character. There is none. Yeah, waste of time, honestly. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> At this point, I was like, mm, that was a bit disappointing, but I still went ahead and tried on another book of the month book, and that was Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This, I'm, I need to admit, this was a very pleasant surprise. I gave this 3.75 stars. This is a thriller that takes place in a deserted island. We have seven strangers and they all meet in this island, but then things start going wrong. I did get the lost vibes from this because I do love how Rachel Hawkins sort of personifies the island. She kind of gives it this creepy element where it feels like the island is alive. It's a really interesting description of the island and it makes you feel, it just makes you feel like something is going to happen, which is it's kind of the feeling that you're looking for in a thriller. And of course, we have dead bodies, like the strangers that are all together now. Some of them start coming up dead and people are like, okay, so who's the killer between all of us? What's going on? Is it us or is it the island or is it somebody else? Like there's so much mystery surrounding this island. And of course, with strangers, you never really know who they are or what they're hiding so like the whole mechanics and the dynamics between the characters was really interesting for me i was so invested so invested in fact that i finished this in a day it was just really interesting and i had so much fun reading this for me this is sort of like lost meets singles inferno i don't know if you watched that it's this korean reality show where a bunch of korean hot people go to this deserted island and they're there to look for love basically if you loved singles inferno and if you like Lost, maybe you'll like Reckless Girls. <laughs> this next book surprised me to my core. I, I didn't even plan to read this, but I just really loved the cover. And since I had already read two book of the month books, I was like, why not read another? So I went ahead and picked up Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. I loved this book so much that I recommended it to my mom and she's currently reading it. So that's why there's a bunch of post-its up here. And it's cute because I did the divisions for her, like daily goals that she has to reach. And she wrote, she's writing whenever she reaches a goal. Like she finished this the 20th of February. And I'm just like really proud of her. You know what I mean? Like she's reading, she's having a good time. She's realizing things. And I feel like a good book teaches you things. And this book definitely did that for me. This was at times very hard to read. But I feel like this is probably one of the best books that I read in February just because it was so hard hitting and it was so beautifully written as well. This is the story of a black father and his gay son. And because of this, the father and the son never had a good relationship and they're sort of estranged. But now the father is dying and on his deathbed, he's writing letters to his son explaining sort of where he was coming from, why he was the way he was. It's a very heartbreaking, heart-wrenching experience. It's so funny because it says, don't cry for me. And that is literally what I did. I think in the last like 80 pages, I just read it with tears in my eyes because it was such a cathartic moment. It was such a cathartic experience. Yeah, it was amazing. It was gut-wrenching. It was beautiful. It was so hard to read, but so worth it. Yeah, so I gave this four out of five stars. And then I read another book of the month book, and this was another thriller, and it was The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. We follow this psychologist who lost her license because of her controversial methods, but ever since she's lost her license, she's become this consultant, and she gets like a lot more clients that actually seek her out because of her controversial methods. She gets this new couple as a client called the Golden Couple. Like people call them the Golden Couple because they seem perfect, but obviously things aren't always what they seem. So we're unraveling this couple's problems as well as a few secrets that they kept here and there. So it's like this exploration of psychology and also like this mystery of what's really going on here. There's cheating, there's past mistakes. There's just like, yeah. You know what I mean? This was a two star. Um, <laughs> for it to be a thriller, I was not very thrilled. I was bored. 
I just kept waiting for something interesting to happen and nothing ever did. And then the whole reveal, I did see it coming. Um, usually I don't care if I see a plot twist coming, but with this one and with thrillers, that's kind of the whole point. So when you see the whole big thing coming, it's like, oh really? This, this is why I read 300 pages? Just for something that I could have made up on my own? Sorry, I don't think so. That was my last book of the month book for February. And then I moved on. <laughs> to rereading another favorite series of mine. The first time that I read these books was in 2014, which is eight years ago. I am sorry, I am sorry. How is that, how, how? You know what I mean? Like, how? Um, I know that we say time is a social construct, but at this point, I don't think time is real. I just really don't. It's insane how the first time that I read these books, I was, small <laughs> i was a child i mean i was i don't even want to do the math i'm just saying i wasn't in my 20s i feel like i've been in my 20s for 30 years i can't believe it's been eight years since i read the Lux series hi um, this is very classic 2015 ya fantasy we got aliens we got like witty banter, we got dark brooding love interests, we got, you know, just like very, <laughs> like I don't even know how to describe these books because if I would have read them for the first time in 2022, I probably wouldn't have liked them as much as I do. But they've sort of become like this nostalgic favorite where every time that I pick these books up, I remember the first time that I read them and I get, I basically just get transported to that time in my life. And because of that, these books mean so much to me and it will forever hurt that I don't have like the paperback edition of the fifth book because by the time the fifth book came out, these were pretty popular books. So they started to get hard covers, but when they first came out, they were all paperbacks. And now it doesn't match and i feel like that is going to haunt me for the rest of my life if you've never heard of the luck series it's a series that written by jennifer l armentrout she is currently writing from blood and ash series which come on now i love that series i forgot 98 percent of what happened and i do have to reread them but i do i do know i love them and i do know that jennifer l armentrout is like known for her brooding male characters like she does such a good job at the brooding and the banter and just like the sexual tension she's got it all down she really does <laughs> do not judge <laughs> do not judge the book covers when i first got them i was like oh these are going to be horrible because these covers are horrible come on like who what you know what I mean? Like you would, I would, I would never pick, pick these up. These look like supermarket historical novels and it just looks disgusting. But if I would have let the book cover dissuade me from picking this up, I wouldn't have found one of my favorite old series. So there we go. Don't judge books by their covers. This is the first one, Obsidian. <laughs> this is disgusting. This is the second one. Oh my god, it just gets worse. This is Onyx. Oh my god, this is <laughs> this is Opal. And this is Origin, which is it isn't as bad as Open Opal and Origin, but I mean, so I do own a bare-chested book cover. Oh hi. Come on. Who's better? Who did it better? definitely Damon. Damon is the character, the main character. And then finally we have Opposition. This is once again disgusting. I wish I could burn it but I can't because I actually do like this book. These were all 4.5 stars. <laughs> like I'm just out here being Oprah giving out 4.5 stars to four books. Hello? I think that's Oprah. I think she's gonna sue me for using her name. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I'm not actually Oprah. This one I did give four stars just because I feel like it wasn't as good as the first four and I do feel like the pacing was a bit off. So the next book that I read was actually for my Patreon buddy read of the month and that was Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This has been on my TBR for over two years. If you've seen my all the books on my TBR video that I did, then you'll find this one familiar and I'm so happy that I finally got around to reading this because I actually really quite enjoyed it. So many of my Patreons were like this is just 
trash this is like the good trash you know these are the books that aren't good but you still have a good time reading them and i can see where they're coming from <laughs> But I just honestly, I really liked it, especially coming off of my Lux reread. This just felt like some good old 2015 fantasy with the brooding characters. I've always found the concept of the seven deadly sins so interesting, and this is based on the seven deadly sins. So that definitely gave this book bonus points because, I mean, it's one of the reasons that I love Full Metal Alchemist so much, just because the portrayals of lust and envy and greed, I'm just in love with that. We're following this girl, she's a witch, and her whole life she's been warned of the princes of hell that she always has to steer clear from, and there are seven, you know, the seven deadly sins and something happens something tragic she loses someone i don't think that's a spoiler because it is advertised like that's one of the main selling points of the book but she loses something and because of that she's willing to risk everything including summoning a prince of hell to help her so she ends up summoning a prince of hell and she gets wrath and let me just tell you wrath fantastic hunk of a man yes 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 i gave this a really high 3.75 stars it's not the next shakespeare it's not the next cassandra clare she being carrie maniscalco she's definitely friends with sarah j moss because the way that she describes the princess of hell and the way that she describes wrath is very reminiscent of riss from a court of thorns and roses like the personality and physically as well they're just very similar so if they're besties i love that for them i can really tell i had such a fun time reading this i'm not really that invested in the characters like if our main character amelia dies i'd just be like oh well that's sad <laughs> or not really <laughs> would i actively spend more money to get the other books maybe not <laughs> the last book that i read was another horror manga i oh my god it's like we've come full circle because i started my month with smashed by junji ito and then i finished the month by reading shiver by junji ito so we got two short story collections by the man of horror manga junji ito this was a four star and this was actually a 4.5 star. There's an eclectic collection of stories in this one and they're all so very traumatizing and gruesome and graphic and so beautifully done. I always recommend reading Junji Ito at night because I feel like you just get way more swept into the story. Because if I read this right now with birds chirping outside and the sun hitting me directly in the face, I wouldn't really feel the same impact if I saw like really, if I saw panels like this, I'd just be like, oh my god, that's so sexy. But if I see it at night, I'm like, hello. hello. <laughs> Reading Junji Ito at night just hits different and I would definitely recommend you do that if you ever pick up Junji Ito. I love that I started and ended my February reading month with Junji Ito selected stories. Anyways, how are we doing? How are you doing? Are you having fun? I hope you're having fun. If you're not, don't tell me. <laughs> if you're not having fun, just tell me you are and let me live in a lie. Those were all the books that I read in the month of February. Let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know which ones have been on your TBR and now you're going to pick up because of my stellar reviews. Let me know if you've read any of these books and let me know which one was your favorite, which one you actually hated and you completely disagree with me. I would love to chat with you all on the comments. I know I've been gone for a hot second and I promise I'm going to be better, but I just miss you guys so much. So I would love to talk about all of the books that we read in February in the comments below and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you had a wonderful time i hope you're doing well and if you aren't hopefully this new month march it means new beginnings new starts new opportunities let's get it i love you all so very much thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye hey jimmy wow. you nice keep going Thank you.